Of all those touched by the miracle, Chrysanthus' pilgrimage has undergone the most complex transformation. Once the greatest threat to the penitent went on his path to complete absolution, she would eventually become his ally and destroy those who she blindly served and worshipped along his side. Eons later, as the penitent one lay in his eternal slumber, she would make the ultimate sacrifice in order to prevent the cycle of pain and agony to begin anew, paving the way for the penitent one to follow upon his resurrection. But before we face off with the first of the penitents, it's time to give credit where it's due. Kudos to Huka Alves 172 for locating the easter egg hidden in the last thumbnail. If you look closely, you'll notice that the traitor is hidden in the bottom left hand side of the border. If you're new to the channel, I've started playing a game with viewers where I hide an easter egg in the thumbnail of each of my videos. The first person to state what and where it is in the comments gets a shout out in the following video. Now, back to the matter at hand. After the destruction of the High Wills by the hands of both the Pentant One and Chrysanta, the influence of the capricious miracle faded into oblivion. All things touched by its grace simply ceased to exist. The Pentant One was no exception, and as such he died along with the miracle that had granted him the power to return from the dead. Custodia would eventually be lost to the annals of history after centuries had passed, but Chrysanta stood ever vigilant, knowing that something evil stirred in the clouds above. After the appearance of the heart in the sky, Chrysanta understood this manifestation for what it was. She knew all too well that this was not a symbol of hope, but the desperate last attempt of the miracle she had helped purge eons ago to be reborn. The miracle was aware of its vulnerability and established a defense network consisting of penitents that were hand-picked for this very purpose. Led by Eviterno, the first of the penitents, these incredibly powerful warriors were a force to be reckoned with. Chrysanta was outnumbered, but her indomitable will carried her great lengths towards her goal of preventing the birth of the Miracle Child. Armed with her legendary sword bound in crimson wrappings, she stormed the highest point of the city of the Blessed Name. It's unknown how long the battle went on, but it's clear that this was certainly a war of attrition. The item description for the remembrance of Chrysanta provides further details regarding the conflict. It reads, Once Chrysanta saw the blood flowing from her wounds, she realized she could never stop the miracle from taking flesh. She had been fighting the Arch Confraternity of Penitents in a long, cruel conflict, but defeat was now inevitable. Eviterno led the congregation, a peerless foe whose impossible power was fed by the endless sources of his divine eternity. The miracle had chosen him to be the protector of its new work, after it bestowed upon him the original penitence, that of perpetual contemplation. To wait endlessly until the miracle required so. And so was he called to arms in the vigil of the new celestial icon's birth, the great divine work that would join the hearts of the devout and bring together their faith. Eviterno, father of penitence, heeded the call and fought in that decisive battle, where Chrysanta met defeat. Exhausted, Chrysanta fell to the cold floor of that temple, knowing she was living to her last moments as that magnificent creation ripped through the bloodied skies above them all. That ancient, sacred ground would be her tomb, but also where her fiery legacy would persist. Her sword. In that very moment, she held her steel up, wrapped as it was in crimson, and plunged it fearlessly into her chest. In her very blood, she bathed it, a final sacrifice bestowed to its future wielder. Only then did Chrysanta allow her eyelids to fall, concealed by the metallic severity of her helmet. And only then did those eyes that had always remained vigilant within their own darkness shut forever, submerge in the night of her blind, unshakable faith. This remarkable lore entry provides an incredible amount of insight about the war against the miracle, but most importantly makes mention of the legacy of Chrysanta's Crimson Sword. Although many would be led to believe that her sacrifice was made in vain, as Eviterna would be the next to utilize the sword in opposition to the Pentant One's pilgrimage, this is not the case. The future wielder referenced in the flavor text of Chrysanta's Remembrance was actually the Penitent One himself who would eventually plunge the sword into Eviterno's heart, ending his penance of eternal contemplation. It's possible that this blessed sword was the only capable weapon of breaking Eviterno's curse of immortality that the miracle had inflicted on him eons ago. However, this was not the end of Chrysanta's legacy. Prior to his expiation, the Penitent One raises the Crimson Blade in honor, revealing that the sword itself was no longer present. 
This, coupled with the after credit scene, leads to a much more interesting conclusion that Chrysanthemum's Blade will surely be used in future expansions or DLC for Blasphemous 2. We now know that her blade can take shape simply by the blessed wrappings themselves, and since they were baptized in her blood, they are likely not bound by the laws of physics. It seems to me that any upcoming content for the series is sure to feature Chrysanthemum's Sword of Wrapped Agony as the primary tool for purifying the world of any deceptive deities, grievous or not. Mark my words, penance may have ended, but Blasphemous is not over. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me know that you want more content just like this. Click on these videos on screen now to continue your journey and I'll be there to guide you when you arrive. Consider becoming a member for exclusive perks like emojis, members only videos, and more. Or check out my ko for your Patreon page if you want behind the scenes content, or if you just want to support me in a more personal way. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. Join the Inhuman community today.